Hello everyone, this is Mayank Sangvi from vlaman.com and I'm back with another Google Cloud Compute Engine tutorial video. And in this video, we will learn how to install LAMP server on our Ubuntu 18.04 VM machine. In this video, we will learn how to create a new VM instance for Ubuntu 18.04. Then we will learn how to install Nginx, PHP and MySQL. Finally, we will learn how to configure Nginx, PHP and MySQL. So let's start. For this video, we are going to refer to this blog post. The blog post URL is available in the description of this video or you can click on this notification icon. For creating a new VM instance, we need to first open Google Cloud Console. So let me open Google Cloud Console. So this is Google Cloud Console VM instance page. Here I'm going to click on the screen button to create a new VM instance for personal group or online training. Contact us. I'm fine with this instance name. I'm fine with the reason. Select your reason based on your audience. For machine type, I'm going to select micro one shared CPU, 0.6 GB memory. I'm fine with this. For boot disk, I'm going to click on change button. I want to select Ubuntu 18.04. So let me select Ubuntu 18.04 LTS. Here you have two options Ubuntu 18.04 LTS or you can select Ubuntu 18.04 LTS minimal. I'm fine with this Ubuntu 18.04 LTS. For boot disk, I'm going to select standard persistent disk. If you want to select SSD, feel free to select SSD. For size, I'm fine with this size. Okay, finally, I'm going to click on select button. The next thing we need to allow HTTP and HTTPS traffic. Okay. Finally, I'm going to click on create button to create this new VM machine. Wait for the VM machine to start. Our VM machine is created successfully. The first test I want to perform is I want to visit this IP address. For this, I'm going to click on this URL. By default, this URL contains HTTPS. So let me quickly edit this URL and I want to remove the S. Okay. So let me hit enter. So our both the pages are filled right now our server don't know how to handle http request for this we need to first install nginx to install nginx we need to first open ssh panel for this i'm going to click on this drop down and then i'm going to select open in browser window this is going to open a ssh panel in browser window okay the next thing i want to minimize this and i want to arrange my browser windows okay so let me arrange it just here and this is sss panel the next thing we need to update the repository for this i'm going to copy the this command sudo apt update this command is going to update the repository okay and the next command is going to install nginx so let me quickly copy the first command and then i'm going to paste it just here okay so this command is going to update the repository once the updation is done you need to copy the second command and then you need to paste it inside the ssh panel okay so the first command is executed successfully so let me quickly copy the second command and then i'm going to paste it just here okay yes definitely i want to install it so in the confirmation type y and then hit enter nginx is installed successfully to check the nginx status i'm going to copy this command okay we need to execute this command with sudo so let me quickly type sudo and then i need to paste this command okay so this is the current status active and running okay the next thing we need to install php for this i'm going to copy this command so this command is going to install php fpm and it is also going to install php mysql dependencies to close this uh, line message you need to press ctrl c from your keyboard now i'm going to copy this command and i'm going to paste it just here this command is going to install php and php mysql dependency definitely i want to install it so yes confirm and then hit enter wait for the installation to complete our installation for php is completed successfully to check the version for php i'm going to type php hyphen v so the version is php 7.2.7 .7. the next test is i want to create a new index.php file and i want to open this index.php file inside browser for this we need to first open the default 
web directory default web directory location is where ww html let me list down the files available in this directory so in this directory we have a default index.html page okay so if you are going to visit our server ip one more time then you are able to see this default index.html page this is the content coming from this file index.nginx-dbn.html file okay now in this directory i am going to create a php file index.php for this i am going to type sudo nano index.php in the index.php i am going to simply type a message ph echo hello vlamon okay finally to save these changes i am going to press ctrl o from my keyboard to close the nano editor i am going to press ctrl x it's time to check the output for this index.php for this i am going to simply append index.php index.php hit enter okay so our browser is able to download our index.php file so let me quickly open this index.php file yes i want to open this and this is the content for our index.php file okay right now nginx is not able to handle php request properly our nginx server don't know how to process index.php file to resolve this issue we need to edit nginx default configuration for this i'm going to first open nginx default.configuration file inside nano editor so let me first open my blog post default.configuration file is available on this location so we need to open this default.configuration in nano editor so this is the command to open configuration file in nano editor so let me open terminal inside terminal i'm going to paste it so this is the content for configuration file scroll down and search for pass php script to file cgi server section okay in this i'm going to uncomment this line the first line is this location the next line is this include and the third line which i want to uncomment is this one okay and the finally i want to uncomment this closing bracket we are almost done with the default configuration file the last thing i want to confirm is the php version in this the selected version is 7.0 but the installed php version is 7.2 so let me quickly change this version okay so let me change or let me remove 0 replace 0 with 2 so this is the path for php 7.2 fpm to confirm this i'm going to first save these changes and i'm going to close the nano editor the location for php fpm is where run php so let me quickly clear the terminal window and i'm going to simply type cd where run php hit enter now i want to list all the content inside this directory okay so our path is correct the next thing we need to check is the configuration status for this i'm going to copy this command sudo nginx hyphen t this command is going to test the nginx configuration okay it means everything is perfect if something is wrong you need to first check the configuration what is wrong you need to fix it then after fixing you are able to restart your nginx services without this okay you are not able to restart your nginx services so let me quickly copy the command to restart nginx server i'm going to paste it just here and this command is going to restart nginx services hit enter and our nginx server is restarted successfully let me again open my browser and here again i'm going to open our index.php file index.php now our nginx server know how to process a php file we are able to see the message hello vlamon next we need to install mysql for this i'm going to open my blog post and i'm going to copy this command this command is going to install mysql on our ubuntu machine so let me quickly paste it and hit enter 
So this operation is going to take 162 MB additional disk space. Yes, I'm fine with this. I want to install MySQL. So I'm going to type Y and then hit enter. Our MySQL installation is completed successfully. Next thing, we need to configure and secure the MySQL installation. For this, we need to copy this command mysql underscore secure installation. We need to run this command with sudo. So let me copy the entire command and I am going to copy this and then finally I am going to paste it just here. Okay, hit enter. So this command is going to ask different questions. The first question is, are you want to enable validated password plugin? Definitely I want to enable this. This plugin is going to check the password strength based on the configuration. Okay. The second question is what type of check you want? The first one is the low. It is only going to check for the length. The second is the medium. In this, we have the length, numeric, missed case and special character check. And the last one is the strong. In this, we have the length check, numeric, mixed case, special characters and dictionary. Definitely, I want a strong protection. Okay. So I'm going to select two. So I'm going to type two and then hit enter. The next thing we need to set the root user password for this i am going to type my root user password hit enter again i am going to enter my root user password we enable the validated password plugin so that's why this plugin is estimating the strength for this password 100 it means it is a good password do you want do you wish to continue with this password definitely so i'm going to type y and then hit enter the next question is remove anonymous user yes definitely i want to remove anonymous user this allow root login remotely yes definitely i want this i only want the root user access from my this server machine okay i don't want anyone to use my root user from remote location so that's why i'm going to press y and hit enter why we are restricting the access for root user because root user have root user have admin privileges the next is remote test database yes definitely i want to remove this the next question is remote test database yes definitely this one is the production environment that's why we need to remove the test database Type Y and hit enter. Finally, uh, reload the privileges table to affect all these changes. Yes, definitely. And we are done with the initial configuration for MySQL. Now let me quickly access MySQL with root user. Okay. So for this, I'm going to type my SQL hyphen U root hyphen P for password. Okay. Then we need to enter our password root user password so i'm going to type password so let me first clear it and let me try it one more time we need to enter our password hit enter and access is denied what is wrong my password is correct okay so for this let me quickly open my blog post and uh, this is my blog post in MySQL 5.7 and newer, newer version, by default, the root user is set to authenticate using auth underscore socket plugin rather than with a password. It means with password, we are not able to perform a login. Okay. This features improve the security and usability, but it can also complicate things. I cannot use root username and password for executing the SQL command. To overcome this limitation or to overcome this, we have two options. The first one is we can change the login type for root user. I'm not going to recommend this one. The second approach, create a new user. For creating a new user, we need to first open the shell, MySQL shell. So I'm going to type sudo MySQL. Okay. So now we are on MySQL shell. The next thing I want to execute following SQL commands. Okay, so the first SQL command, this SQL command, this entire SQL command is going to create our new user and privileges for the new user. So I, let me quickly copy this entire my SQL code. I'm going to copy this and then finally I'm going to paste it just here. Okay, so create user Mayang Sangvi. 
for local host with this password and grant all privileges for my Xangvi on local host. So let me hit enter and our query is executed successfully. Now let me quickly check the user table. So it's select mysql.user, hit enter. Okay, so this is all the available user. If you are going to copy all the columns, then you are able to see this table structure. Okay, the first user is the root. For root, we don't have any authentication string because for root user, we are using auth underscore socket plugin. For Mangsangvi, the newly created user, we are using MySQL native password plugin for the authentication. So that's why we have a authentication string. Okay. So it means we can use Mayang Sangvi for accessing MySQL with password, but for root user, we are not able to use password. So this is the initial server setup for Nginx on Ubuntu 18.04 machine. In our next video, we will learn how to install and secure PHP my admin. We are going to cover the PHP my admin installation in the next video. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, don't forget to click on like, subscribe, share it with everyone, provide your feedback, and see you all in next Google Cloud Compute Engine tutorial video. Some important URLs.